Okay, so today we're going to use the camera to put in a photograph background. And we're going to take the picture right from inside, flip a clip. So I'm going to name this project Camera Test. And then I'm going to go into the settings. You can pick whatever resolution you want. And I'm going to go and select the camera option from the background. It's on the bottom right, right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of these people's feet. So now I say OK. And now it wants to let me adjust the image. I can flip it right and left. I can flip it up and down or vertical. I can rotate it 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise and the same clockwise. And then I can use this bottom one to fit it again. And I'm just going to leave it how it was to start with. Save it. Hit the little check mark. And now it should have it set as the background of my project. And I'm just going to hit Create Project. And that's all you really have to do to bring in a photo from the camera uh, and flip a clip. So now I'm going to do an animation over a realistic background, the, over the image I just took. And for this one, I'm going to make a little green guy. And I'm going to select a color of green. And then I'm going to use the brush tool to make kind of plump little um, appendages, little limbs of the guy because uh, those are easier to draw and they don't take as much work. It's, it's pretty much the same amount of effort as doing a stick figure, but you can actually work with the volume of, uh, of your character, which is, is a good thing to learn how to do. So I'm going to give him maybe not quite that thick, but pretty thick little arms and legs. So that's the basic style, and then I'm going to add another frame, and I'm going to keep adding, you know, you can do whatever you want, you know, you, you can make him dance, or run around, or fight, or, you know, interact with things in the, in, in the environment, or the picture, you know, or you can have him do whatever he wants. Um, I'm just going to do a simple little jumping back and forth animation, uh, just to get a little action but I don't want to spend too long doing this. And I'm going to switch this to fast mode so that we just uh, don't have to watch me painstakingly do every one of these frames. One thing I'm always doing is scrubbing back and forth over the frames of the animation and then hitting the play button so I can kind of see what I have so far. And that can give you an idea of the speed, if you're going to do it uh, straight through, if you're going to animate from beginning to end, then it makes sense to just keep scrubbing through and seeing how the motion and the speed is working, and then you know if you need to add in a little more detail or take out a frame here and there to, to kind of make this the speed make sense. And you pretty much just do it by eye. It's really up to you how you want your animation to look. So now I have the animation in a place I'm happy with the way the body looks. And I'm going to add a new layer in the bottom right, add a new layer. And then I'm going to pick a color for his eyes. And I'm going to give him little, little red eyes. So now I'm going to turn off the onion skin so that there's not an overlapped image from the last layer. And the onion skin can be turned on and off in the options in the upper right corner, the little three X's or three dots. And now I'm going to scrub through, selecting each one of the frames in the bottom on my new layer, and I'm going to draw in the eyes. You could also just draw your eyes once and then copy and paste. Uh, I, that's what I do with the mouth. Uh, a little bit later, but uh, it's easy enough for me to just draw the eyes and it's not that many frames So I just draw them in but Yeah, and I kind of play play it back and I Think they look okay So now I'm adding in a mouth And I play around with this for a little while I'm trying to get it have a right shape. I kind of wanted it to be a smile, but this kind of looked more like more of a grimace or a Right, and you can adjust the thickness of your pen tool with that little circle by dragging up and down on the bubble underneath the pen tool. 
So yeah, this is what I thought looked more like a grimace, so I didn't really want this. So you can undo, or you can just erase the whole thing. Or you can erase the contour on the top to make it closer to the shape of a smile. And I have the eyes and the mouth on the same layer, but it's a separate layer from the body so that I'm not messing up the body whenever I want to make changes to the, the facial expressions. And that was pretty close, and I think I just go with it. Yeah. Now I add teeth. And I'm not going to redraw that. I'm just going to use the lasso tool, select it, and then in the upper right I'm going to use that to copy it to the clipboard. And now I'm just going to paste the mouth onto each frame of the animation. And you can use the widget uh, to adjust the rotation and the placement of the mouth. The little circle on top of, of the paste widget um, lets you adjust the rotation. And if you drag the corners of the, the widget, then it adjusts the scale of, of the selection. So I'm going to go in fast forward mode here again. You can just see me rotating it and putting the mouth in place roughly. It looks like I missed missed the eyes, so I'm just copying the eyes there. And I'm going to continue copying the mouth into the place of the little menace monster guy. And now I'm done. All the frames of the mouth and the eyes. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to copy the last frame and add it in a few more just so I have a 24 frames of animation. Or 24 frames, whether or not they're all animated. Yeah, and it, there's enough action there, I think, for a demonstration purpose. And now I'm going to turn my onion skin, or I'm going to make a, a play blast. I'm going to do a quick pencil test, a quick test of my animation. It's not done yet, but I want to see how it's looking. So here it is. Okay, and that was fine. I think I'm going to add in a shadow to make the little creature look like it is uh, more convincingly grounded in the world. So I make a new layer, and this layer I'm going to drag it underneath the little gremlin monster. And I'm going to do like I did in the last tutorial, and I'm going to use a black brush to paint in a little blobby shadow underneath the character. And instead of just doing a circle, I'm going to try to make some reflection of the actual limbs of the character in the shadow to make it seem more like there's a light source casting, you know, through the limbs and making it uh, less of a circular blob and more like you would expect to see a 3D object have in the world. So I turned the opacity for the shadow layer down to about 20% so that it's not so stark because shadows aren't completely pitch black. And now I scrub through and see if I missed any uh, frames. And I make little adjustments here and there to the shadows to make them more consistent. Looks like I missed a frame there. And just make the shadow feel more realistic. It, it's not a, so it's good to zoom out and kind of get a better perspective on how the how it looks. So it looks like it's pretty good. So we learned to add in some facial expressions, use multiple layers, um, bring in a custom image from the camera, uh, do some looping animation, work with some colors. Yeah, so hopefully this was helpful to you, and thanks for watching.